Good morning, everyone. Connie Myers here. And I have an absolute privilege of getting to talk to one of my people that I most in the real estate industry. Uh, it's truly my honor to introduce Sherry O'Neill Chris uh, to my Kick Butt Leadership Interview Series. Thank you so much, Sherry, for joining us. Oh, Connie, it's such a pleasure to be with you from afar today. And I'm looking forward to our chat. Well, I'm going to just jump right on in. So the first thing I ask everybody is, were you a leader as a child? Well, I was the oldest of four children. So the answer would be yes. I helped bring up my siblings. Uh, we weren't that far apart in age, but it was my job as the eldest child to uh, do a lot more around the house and um, help them as well. So the answer would be yes to that. Well, we have very similar backgrounds then. So I, I think maybe there's a certain advantage to being the oldest. Uh, and maybe I'm just a little prejudiced. I don't know. But I think I think we learn some of those skills early on because we are the oldest. I agree with you, Connie. And uh, I kind of look at it as pioneering as a child where, you know, I had to do everything first. By the time my youngest sister, uh, you know, um, kind of hit the round, hit the ground running, um, she had her own car. She had, uh, you know, the way was paved for her, which was great, and I was happy to have been able to do that, and uh, you know, to to learn leadership skills at an early age. I didn't like it back then. Uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I complained about it, but uh, of course, as with everything when you look back on your childhood and many of the things that you didn't like were absolutely the best learning experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, of the leadership skills you learned as a child, uh, what are some things that you actually use today? What are some of the skills? Today I am always have been an empowering leader where I like to uh, help people bring out the best in themselves um, by, you know, really empowering them and and allowing them to um, bring forward new ideas, uh, to uh, take on leadership in their own way and uh, be part of a collaborative team. So collaboration is very, very important. I'm a strong believer, as many leaders are, that um, teamwork uh, is you know, the way that you achieve the absolute best results. Well, I think the very first time I ever heard you speak, uh, you and Wendy Forsyth were introducing some new program for Better Homes and Gardens. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked a little bit about that. I mean, And you had me, I think the minute you opened your mouth and started talking, you had me because I totally relate to, you know, building teams and it has to be, you know, a legacy of true leaders is more of a support person than they are anything else. So I can totally see what, were, how what was your journey like? What were, what were you doing prior to being the CEO of Better Homes and Gardens and ERA? Well, I spent 16 years, I'm Canadian um, by birth and I spent 16 years at a company, a large company in Canada um, called Royal LePage. Um, it's owned, uh, well, it's publicly traded, but um, it's part of the Brookfield group of companies. And I uh, left there in 2003, um, having done a lot of work around changing the model from a company owned uh, branch office, national real estate organization to primarily franchised offices. So sold almost all of the offices and um, you know, helped, helped build uh, what was the start of a huge franchise organization. So that's where I cut my teeth on uh, um, franchising and became, I guess, somewhat of an expert at it because ultimately Realogy hired me in 2006. I was with the Coldwell Banker brand for a short period of time and then was asked to move over and launch uh, Better Homes and Gardens real estate from scratch, which was an interesting scenario in itself. Um, what do you, so you had to have a basic philosophy. Um, I'm sure it carried over from your, your idea of building teams and stuff like that, but uh, starting a brand from scratch had to be a little bit challenging. 
and exciting, I'm sure, all at the same time. Um, what are some of the things that you found to be challenging that you were able to um, find innovative ways to overcome? Well, the biggest uh, challenge was finding brokers and agents because when you're launching something as a pure play startup, uh, there, there was nothing. I mean, it was just me to start. I built a team, built a website, built a value proposition, um, and ultimately attracted agents and brokers to it. So, you know, that, uh, excuse me, first couple of years, uh, the most challenging, but also the best too, because one of the things that I was able to do is take what, you know, some of my beliefs, um, i.e., um, a you know a brand should stand for something should have a stake in the ground um, state its set of core values um, that was one um, another one was that providing exceptional customer service will bring you more business and help make the whole you know home buying and home selling experience um, more rewarding for everyone in particular the consumer and another one was uh, the importance of giving back to um, you know, to the world and uh, making sure that um, the appropriate amount of time was spent doing that. When you take those and, you know, those things and put them together and you're able to, you know, really um, try out what you believe in a new brand environment and suddenly see that it's actually working, uh, that's, um, you know, it's pretty powerful stuff, Connie. And uh, it was a great great opportunity 11 years ago and still is today. So it sounds like that you embrace a lot of, um, you talk about empowerment, you talk about collaboration, uh, core values. It sounds to me like you really incorporate a lot of mindfulness practices. Um, what are some personal mindfulness practices that you do to help start your day or to work through your day? Well, for me, as I mentioned earlier, um, I meditate every morning uh, just to you know, get um, a clear focus on the day. I um, like to break out my day, not in um, a task list, but uh, you know, what's most important. And what's most important to me is growing this business and these two brands. So if you concentrate on uh, those things that are actually most important and meaningful, um, everything else falls into place. And the, the menial tasks that are at the bottom of the list that sometimes we do first because they're the easiest, um, those often don't matter at all. So we don't even have to worry about them. So, you know, I like to spend the majority of my time uh, with our broker owners and prospects and um, helping them grow their businesses because uh, that's really what my job is. Absolutely. So um, you, you've got some incredible, strong um, beliefs in mindfulness. How do you I think I've lost you. Uh -oh. Can you hear me? Um, there you go. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you now. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so my question was, um, how to incorporate your, uh, uh, brokers? I'm sorry, you're going to have to repeat that, Connie, because you were you're cutting in and out a bit. Okay. Oh, I see why my signal is very weak here. Um, okay, I think it just got stronger. Um, so with, you have very strong mindfulness practices that you have personally. How do you incorporate those with your teams and your broker owners? Do you have processes that you do to help them incorporate those kinds of practices in their offices? Well, we, you know, they're individually owned um, companies, so we can't, um, you know, force right. anyone to incorporate anything. Right. But, and what I will say is with uh, both of these brands, Better Homes and Gardens, Real Estate and ERA, uh, they're very, very strong cultures um, and, you know, driven in, even though the value propositions are quite different, uh, driven in a similar manner. So what happens in franchising is that just as in anything in life, if you're building a real estate office or company is that you bring people in who are like-minded and you connect with people at a deeper level um, who are like-minded. And so what happens is you end up having, you know, a, um, 
an incredible group of brokers, not just here in this country, but around the world who think the same way and help each other the same way. Uh, that in itself is is very powerful. So rather than forcing it, um, you draw people in and um, it's um, you know truly a wonderful experience for all involved. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you and I met for the very first time through a mutual friend, Bernice Ross, at, at Awesome Females in Real Estate. And um, so how, how many years have you gone to her, to her event? Gosh, well, I've known Bernice for um, a long time. I'm going to say probably about 15 years. And um, here's an interesting thing, Connie, is that um, in the early days, I went to the event every year. And then what I decided to do is to, uh, you know, allow the opportunity for some of my colleagues here at Realogy to attend the event. And so um, Amy Chereau, who uh, uh, we've worked together for the past love seven Amy. years, I love her. Um, and then some of our other uh, female uh, business consultants, et cetera, have attended the event and they come back raving. And so, you know, as, as I like to do, I've uh, been able to share that opportunity and not just keep it to myself. So, um, you know, it, it allows Bernice to have a wider uh, group of people that are participating in, 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 you know, many ways. But with Bernice and that group, uh, they truly are and everyone truly is giving back to the industry and giving back to females in the industry. So I admire and respect her tremendously. Yeah, this is going to be my, I think it's my 12th year this year that I'm going to be going. And I always tell her at the end of every event, I don't, I didn't think it could get any better, but it does. <laughs> I know it's crazy. So uh, <laughs> she's got a knack, that's for sure. She definitely does. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you've shared. Um, I've known Amy for quite a while too. I think actually before she came over to Better Homes and Gardens and what a joy she is. And, and some of the other ladies that you've brought on uh, over to Awesome Females. I think the, I think the real benefit of Awesome Females is the collaborative um, event that it is. It's, it's not about, it's not about out and out networking, even though you do build these relationships, it's about sharing and really caring about helping one another. And I think that's the feeling that uh, most people get when they leave. I agree. And, uh, you know, to openly give without asking for anything re in return, that's uh, a wonderful thing for uh, the person who's giving and also the recipient. And uh, if we all practice that each and every day, uh, this industry and this world will be a wonderful place. Absolutely. I'm in total agreement. Well, I know you've got a very busy schedule. So thank you, though, for taking this time and, and talking with me. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And um, I look forward to seeing you at well, some meeting somewhere. <laughs> some meeting somewhere. I don't know where, but uh, Connie, thank you for including me in your series. I greatly appreciate it and all the best for a wonderful 2020. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, you'll be seeing this interview. I'll be posting it in a couple different places. So um, thanks so much for everyone for joining us. And I look forward to our, my next interview. Take care, everybody. Bye.